Hello and welcome. This video will discuss maintaining patient safety while having a blood transfusion. When patients are in the hospital, it's really important to make sure they are safe. This helps them to get better treatment, allows staff to fulfill their legal and ethical responsibilities, avoids mistakes, and gives the patient the best care possible. This is a very important part of healthcare and everybody in the healthcare team needs to work together for this. For example, if a patient is bleeding, a team of different healthcare professionals will take care of them. Some of the team members may be very experienced, while others will be less experienced. They will do many things at the same time, like taking blood samples for testing, starting intravenous fluids, putting in a urinary catheter, even a vaginal examination can carry a risk of introducing infection. In this situation, the patient is at an extremely high risk, not only because of their main health problem, but also because of the various treatments and interventions that they receive. Being in a hospital also puts the patient at risk for infections that they might catch there, which could be resistant to multiple drugs. To make sure the patient recovers early and safely, everyone attending to them must be extremely careful. When a patient needs blood transfusion, often it means they are very sick. And then there is a multidisciplinary team which includes obstetricians, anesthetists, hematologists, and blood bank personnel. Nurses, doctors, assistants, they will all be involved in the management of the patient during the hospital stay. By following these safety checks, health care providers can significantly improve the safety and effectiveness of a blood transfusion in an obstetric patient and reduce potential risks and complications. One of the most important aspects to consider is the identification of the patient. This should be verified using two unique identifiers, such as either a full name and date of birth or medical record number or NIC number before administering any blood products or even any drug. For the sake of blood transfusion, two person verification is required. So two patient Two-person verification is different from unique identifiers. By two-person verification, we mean that at least two people should verify that this blood belongs to this patient. They will independently check and confirm the patient's identity, the blood group and its compatibility, and any other relevant critical information before starting the transfusion. The hospital where the patient is admitted has the responsibility to have a printed consent form. This will ensure that the patient and or their legal guardians fully understand the medical procedure, treatment or interventions that they are about to undergo. Medical professionals have a legal and ethical obligation to obtain informed consent before performing any medical procedure. Without consent, performing a medical intervention could be considered a violation of the patient's rights and could lead to legal consequences for the healthcare provider. So this is a very important safety check for the patient as well as for the healthcare providers. Proper notification and documentation of vital signs is very significant 
and all vital signs which include blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, as well as the oxygen saturation as, and le relevant laboratory tests should be done before the transfusion and should continue monitoring during the transfusion. In major hemorrhage, oxygen will be administered at 15 liters per minute and aim at a saturation range of 94 to 98 percent. So when giving oxygen, make sure that the proper dosage is being given to ensure maximum protection and maximum benefit for the patient. You must ensure that the blood products being transfused are compatible with the patient's blood type. ABO and RH compatibility must be confirmed to prevent transfusion reactions. All the staff as well as the patient's caretaker should be vigilant for signs of transfusion reactions. These will include fever, chills, rash, shortness of breath, and hemodynamic instability. Stop the transfusion immediately if a reaction is suspected and inform your senior and take the right measures for helping the patient. Another safety check is to use a dedicated blood administration set with a blood filter to remove potential clots or debris before the blood reaches the patient. Transfusions cannot be administered through an ordinary drip set. The rate of infusion must also be done very carefully adhering to hospital guidelines for transfusions. In case rapid transfusion is required, then you will need a rapid infuser device. This is a very critical part of ensuring patient safety and this is the documentation. Accurately document the details of the transfusion, the intake of fluids, the output of fluids, the amount of uh, blood being uh, administered, the type of blood being uh, uh, blood product being administered, and the patient's response and any adverse reaction. Ensure patient safety by measuring and maintaining a constant monitoring of the core temperature of the patient. By maintaining the core temperature, we reduce the risk of hypothermia-induced coagulopathy. Apart from the blood transfusion, patients who are very sick are also at risk of getting infected. To ensure safety check, and to ensure that if infection is not being transmitted to hospitalized patients, health care facilities follow rigorous infection prevention and control measures. These safety checks involve various protocols, guidelines, and practices aimed at minimizing the risk of infection. If such protocols and guidelines are not available in your department, then it is a responsibility of the staff members to develop these protocols and guidelines and to ensure that all the staff members are cognizant of these protocols and guidelines and have regular day training sessions and drills to ensure that when a crisis occurs or when a patient is very sick, everybody is on board and doing the every possible thing to safeguard the patient. Healthcare workers should use appropriate personal protective equipment such as gloves, gowns, masks, and eye protection when caring for patients with contagious infections. Hand hygiene is crucial as a safety check to prevent the transmission of infections. Ensure that all healthcare personnel, visitors, and patients practice proper hand hygiene by washing hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand sanitizers. It is extremely important to prioritize the safety of all patients in the hospitals. When patients are sick, the risk to the patient increases. 
Safety checks will ensure more successful recovery for the patient. These checks will help to prevent mistakes and provide the highest level of care possible. Ensuring the safety of the patient is crucial and requires ongoing commitment and collaboration from all members of the healthcare team. With this, we come to the end of our video. If you like the video, please press the like button, share with colleagues and friends, comment. We value your feedback on these videos. Please subscribe to allow this channel to remain viable and press the bell notification to allow information about future videos. Thank you and goodbye.